Hey guys, it's Nick with the Bass Hookup. Hopefully you just came over here from the Windy Wednesday Night video, uh, but if you didn't, welcome, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning into our channel, and I'm gonna do this video all on what I use for punching, what I, the type of rod I like, line, weight size, what type of weeds I like to punch, and I'm talking pretty much specifically the Delta, but you could apply it anywhere as I'm gonna do in these little ponds. You could do it at ponds from the bank, you could do it at Clear Lake, you could do it anywhere there's vegetation. So we're gonna get into all that in this video. Stay tuned. All right, let's start with uh, let's start with the rod. I like a rod that has a real parabolic bend in it. The reason for that is I've used many different rods for punching. And I really like the parabolic bend because I want that rod to stay loaded up in those weeds so the fish doesn't get any slack. If the fish gets any slack in that line, you guys know you're going to risk losing that fish. If it gets any slack at all, it could come unpinned, especially in that heavy cover. So I really like to use a rod with a good parabolic bend. I don't want it to shut off you know, way up here in the tip. I want it to bend back in here. Give me that good arching bend and that way you know i could keep that fish penned i also have enough power though to pull them out of the weeds if i need to but i could keep them penned go in there and get them so the rod that i really i've been using those last couple years is a dobbins fury 795 it's a swim bait rod it's actually a medium heavy medium heavy um and they say it's a fast action but this rod has a really good parabolic bend to it. So that's the rod I use, is the Dobbins, the Dobbins Fury 795 SB. For me, it's a good rod. It also, I want a rod with a good butt section where I could stick that under my arm and I have a lot of leverage to hook that fish and to keep it pinned. I don't want it this to be too short. I don't want it to be too long. And I also like it padded here because as you know, if you get into a good punch bite, you'll have bruises right here. But this good padding all the way down, you know, it'll help with that. It's definitely a lot more comfortable. So that's the rod I use. The uh, reel I use, actually all my reels are Lou's. This reel on here is a Lou's custom reel, one of the newer ones. The reason I like it, this custom reel holds plenty 65 pound braid and that's what i use 65 pound braid has plenty of that and also has 24 pounds of drag if you look at your other reels i was using a daiwa i have had some shimanos but the drag is 12 to 14 pounds and i've had that drag slip on me where every time i reel down i have to thumb the spool to pull the fish up because the drag was too weak i don't have that with this with 24 pounds of drag I cinch that drag down and I don't have a problem with my drag slipping pretty much ever. The line, like I just said, it's 65 pound P-line TCX braid and then I'm throwing that and I'm not specific. I know a lot of guys are about all their gear. I'm not real picky on the hook. I just want a good stout hook, you know, your typical punch hook typical punch hook and then I'm throwing that punch hook tying that on with a snail knot and see how much tag end I leave when I cut my line there's a lot of tag in I'm not worried about that it's going down in the weeds who cares I just want to make sure that thing doesn't come unpinned and I've maybe broke off once in the rocks but never on a fish snail knot We'll go over some baits that I like to throw. This is a Berkeley Pit Boss. And sometimes I throw this um, punch skirt right there, a punch skirt. A lot of times I don't like a punch skirt. I don't know, I just switch it up. This one has a punch skirt on it. And then I almost always just throw one and a half ounce tungsten bullet weight. If I have to, I'll go bigger. But most of the time, one and a half ounces get you through everything. And you want to go with as light a weight as possible to get through whatever vegetation you're punching. 
I want this thing to fall as natural as possible through there. If you've ever seen a crawdad, you take a live crawdad and throw it out in the lake, it doesn't fall fast at all. It almost falls like a Senko. So we'll go over that when I get on the water, how I like to work my bait through the weeds, but they just don't, they don't move that fast. Now I know, you know, you could get sometimes on that reaction bite where it's moving fast and they come over and eat it on that reaction strike. That definitely sometimes gets bit, but for the most part, I get, a, I try to get away with the lightest weight possible. So on submerged vegetation, I'm going to have a three quarter ounce. That'll usually get me through any submerged vegetation. Um, on stuff that's on the surface, like you see out here, one and a half ounces usually will get me through. Some of the stuff in the delta is really, really thick. If the wind's blowing on it, I do have to go up to two ounces or you will. So then you got from your weight, the bobber stop right there. A lot of guys throw two. I throw two on there a lot. On this one, I just have one. So that's the whole setup. That's the whole setup right there. Totally weedless. And once I have that rigged, um, the reason you want a snail knot on your hook is because you gotta think, when that fish comes up and eats this bait, it's mouth shut. You go and yank this thing hard, which I set the hook hard, everybody sets the hook hard, right? You yank this hook hard, the weight is gonna pop its mouth open. These are things I always think about, you know, down there under the water, the fish comes up, grabs it. I set the hook hard, pops its mouth open, and hopefully that hook gets it. If it's way down there, way down in its mouth or throat, and you yank on it, as it's coming up, the weight will hit the top of the hook. And since it's on that snail knot, it actually pendulums the hook up almost like a scorpion tail. So if this weight's in its mouth and you set the hook, the it's going to boom, go like that. Hopefully this hooks the fish before that thing pops its mouth open and pegs them in the roof or whatever. But that's why you want a snail knot on there. So let's go over some of the baits that I like to throw. All right, this is just what I like to throw. This is what I have confidence in. And you know what? Fishing it's it's 80 percent confidence whatever you're confident in whatever technique it is whatever bait it is that's what you want to throw don't listen to what everybody else has catched them on it's all about confidence confidence is key in fishing if you don't have confidence in a bait you're not going to work it as slow you're not going to work it as thoroughly same thing goes with fishing spots if you don't have confidence in that spot you are not going to work it as good as a spot you know you've caught 50 fish from in the past it's all about confidence. So these are just some baits that I like to throw. I throw, just started throwing the Berkeley or the Berkeley Pit Boss. So this one is in the Skeet's Hot Craw color. And online, it looked a lot darker red, which I was hoping it would be. What I've noticed, there's not a lot of baits that come in the correct craw colors, at least for the California Delta. They're too orange, they're too bright red. Nobody makes a really great looking color. Oh, and by the way, if you notice my hat, first gen fishing, new brand. Um, if you guys were with me since the beginning, some of my videos, I've talked about you know us doing prototype bait, stuff like that. We're finally launching this new brand at iCast this year in just a month and a half. So look out for that. Super excited. Been working on a lot of baits for um, two years now. So just, it's been, a, it's been a, some trials and stuff like that and testing but we got it down again launching the new brand first gen fishing in july at icast so keep your eye out for that when it comes out on tackle warehouse and all the stores and all that stuff and hopefully maybe we can make a soft plastic one day that's the right correct you know the correct crawdad colors because right now there's nothing i really love um but berkeley pit boss and that ski talk craw i like it but it's a little bit too bright orange for me. It's not really natural. Another one I throw is the uh, Reaction Innovations Kinky Beaver. If I want action on the fall, a little bit of action. The Kinky Beaver, I'll take one out of the package, has two little appendages right here. And these, these claws actually have flappers on them. So they kick as they go down. 
as opposed to, and I do throw, of course, a regular sweet beaver. And I do I do like this color. This is a regular sweet beaver, not a double double wide, but this is in the Bloody Mary. This is in the Bloody Mary color. As you see right here, you got um, watermelon red, and then that red orange color on the back with black and red flake. That's a good color, but see this doesn't have much action on the fall. It just goes straight through. Sometimes that's what they want. No action, just straight through fall. Other times they want the kinky beaver with those appendages. And the colors I'm gonna throw are Bloody Mary. I throw hematoma. And when the fish seem like they're eating bluegill, there's lots of bluegills in those weeds. Then I throw the dirty wizard. And I caught a lot of big fish on this dirty wizard colored kinky beaver. Great, great bait. Okay, so that's it for baits, my setup, my rods. Let's go down to the water and I'll show you how to work that thing through the weeds and what the weeds, you know, look like, what you're looking for. And I know it's a pond, but this pond's really relatable to the delta. It has a lot of similar vegetation. So let's go. All right, first things first, whenever I'm approaching or looking for punch spots on the delta, I'm going to look for something similar to this. The best spots usually have two types of vegetation mixed in. Plain hydrilla, mat, that's good. Periwinkle by itself, that's good. This slimy, you know, typical frog cheese, I don't punch that that often really at all. But if you have the three mixed together, if you have duckweed pushed up against hydrilla, hydrilla that's mixed in with a periwinkle mat, those spots, it's just the mix of vegetation that draws in a lot of bait, crawdads, and therefore the bass. So right here, if I'm gonna start punching this and I'm in the delta, a lot of times I'd wanna punch right, either right on that line where this cheese meets this weed here. Let's just say it was hydrilla, right where that meets the hydrilla, and right inside the hydrilla. Another thing you're looking for in the Delta is a lot of times the hydrilla, the problem with it is it could get pushed around all over. It could get blown wherever. But the spots to look out for is where that hydrilla's grown up a foot, two feet tall. You know how it gets really tall. That tells me that's been in that same spot for quite a while. It's more mature, which provides a more stable house for the fish to be under. It's a spot that's always been there, almost like a dock. And so those fish have a longer time to find it and get under it. All right, so when I go to punch, it's like anything else. With bass fishing, I don't like to make a ton of commotion. I like this bait to get in there. So instead of bombing this thing way up in the air and having it come down, boom, I really try to avoid that. I try to flip it out pretty, you know, straight, just like a regular, like I'm flipping a normal bait like this. Let it go down, hit the water, and shake it through. Shake it through if it doesn't go through. If it goes through, I'm just gonna feather it through. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep my thumb on the spool like this and let it go down. Let it go down. Constantly feeling for that, waiting for that bite, or waiting for it to stop. Now, if it goes down to the bottom. I know I'm on bottom, I click it shut, and I always feel real gently at first, because sometimes those fish eat it and they just sit there. If you go down like this and go to pop it, you might have just popped it out of the fish's mouth. It's too late. So I always go down real gently, nothing there. Then I pull it up, maybe a foot, let it go back down. Pull it up a foot, let it go back down. If I pull it up a foot and it doesn't go back down, I'm gonna feel gently again, either it's gonna be a fish or it's just stuck on a root system or something like that. And if it's fish, you can go jack them. If not, then you go again. Before I ever pull it out of the water too, a lot of times those fish, they'll get in, a, in situations where they're right under the roots. So you have the plant and then roots under here. And so I try to, before I lift it out, I'll pull my bait up so it's penned up against the roots and then just shake it. 
let it go down a little bit, pull it up against the root, shake it. Now, if I don't get anything, I'm pulling it out. All that usually takes one flip, maybe 10 seconds. And I'm just covering water, going down, going down, flipping every, you know, flipping every five, 10 feet. If I get one, I might turn back or keep going. If I get another one, turn back around, go through that area again. But that's, that's pretty much it for how I would flip, you know, these weeds. All right, I've come somewhere a little bit deeper so I could show you guys exactly what I'm talking about when I'm letting it go through. And right here we got that good mix, this weed, the frog cheese against this weed. And that's where I'm gonna wanna flip, right on the edge of that stuff. And see, it hits the water and I finesse it down. Lift it up, let it go down. Lift it up, back down, maybe shake it. Lift it up to the root. So now I've lifted it up, it stops. I'm right under the roots. I'll shake it right there for a second, hold it, nothing, reel it back in. Flip out a little bit further. And I did not let it plop. I finessed that into those weeds. It didn't just go boom. That fish has no idea something's coming down. So that's part of the reaction strike, right? A reaction strike is usually something that the fish aren't prepared to see that bait and you, it flies by their face and wham, they eat it. Same thing, you don't need to make a lot of noise to draw a reaction strike. It comes in there subtle, it's sitting there minding its own business, all of a sudden this thing comes straight down in front of their face or in their home and they turn around and boom, eat it. So I'm going up and down, nothing there. I'm gonna reel it back in. Now, I don't know if you guys could see, there are two fish right here. Like good ones. I have the polarized lens on here. And they're, I don't know what they're doing. They honestly might be looking to bed again because there are, there is a bed right here. I know it's messing up the whole video, but let's see if I could catch one of these. All right, guys, now that this video has already gone all off track, I promise we'll get back on track with the punching. I just got to see if I can catch this bed fish real quick. I already got bit once on that punch bait. Now I got my jig, same jig. I broke off that big fish in the Wednesday nighter. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh got her. Got her. Whoa. That was a quick switch from the quick switch from the jig to the the punch to the jig. Got her right there, right in the roof of the mouth. Nice healthy little fish. Let her go back. Now let's see if we can make it back to back. Let's see if we could get see if we get the friend over here. Back to back. Come on, eat it. Back to back, baby. Back to back. Keep her out of the book, out of the dirt. Woo, man, back to back. Look at that. How important was that? Switch from the punch bait to the jig and immediately, immediately ate it. Thank you. <laughs> So this lake has a lot of submerged grass. As you can see, this submerged grass is what I'm talking about. It almost comes up to the surface, but it's not quite to the surface, creating a mat. It's under the surface. The delta has a lot of the same. And the bass live in this stuff just like they do under the other stuff. So all you're going to do is pick your spot. Through this stuff, you can get through a lot easier most of the time with a three-quarter ounce. 
my weight here is a little heavy for it, but it'll still work. And I'm picking points in it where there, it comes to a point and the outside weed line, you know, you got to imagine it like it's structure. So I don't just want somewhere that's just a straight line, really. I want weed lines that have points, weeds jetting off of it. Those are typically going to be better high producing areas. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Fish didn't cooperate this time, although, you know, they were on bed, so they're not really under the weeds. I'm sure there's some if I got out there in a boat, but sometimes they, they're biting it, sometimes they're not. Hope you guys, uh, hope you guys got some takeaways from this video on punching and you could apply them to the Delta. Remember, you know, it's just, it's all about having fun. Um, punching could be a grind. If they're not on that punch bite, you got to look for something else because it could be on and it could be off. But coming up, I guarantee you there's going to be some days where that punch bite is on out there in the Delta, Clear Lake, anywhere with a lot of vegetation like we have here at this pond, uh, even pond fishing. So hope you guys got some takeaways. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.